one. I feel a little bit stuck today with the painting. I kind of have a few ideas, but I'm not ready to bring them to the paper. So I thought maybe I'll just sketch a few things in my sketchbook and see how I feel about it, whether it's something more comforting or not. I have recorded um, a bit of footage from uh, auditioning a green color to the canvas, to this color palette, and I think I will insert it um, first and then we will move on to the um, kind of content that I will be creating now. So I'll see you at my desk. Welcome back to my desk. I think in the beginning of the video I said I will be auditioning a green colors but there will be some blues as well. More kind of deeper darker blues rather than the lighter ones that you just saw on the other page. So here I'm just uh, sketching out very simple round shapes to mimic the Chinese money tree leaves and within that I am using some of the colors here um, which are predominantly um, oil sticks. Well, they are oil sticks, but later on I will also use acrylic um, ink as well. So, uh, what we have here is uh, a little tool which I think actually is used to sculpt um, clay and things like that. It's got a silicone nib. I bought a set of them a while ago. I think these are, if I'm not mistaken, yes, they are Pro Art uh, or Pro Arte color applicator, um, it says. And I quite like using them um, like a similar to the catalyst tool um, just to apply the oil paints they come in a stick these ones and so i have tried a number of different things i don't like using brushes i don't like using um, particularly using the sponges and so some sort of a silicone spatula of some sort works well also i actually quite like uh, this metal spatula as well it works really well because you can build it up and create a thicker uh, lay of paint and also um, the the texture on top it can be sort of quite rough it can be smooth uh, it's uh, you can play around with it it's a different feeling to the uh, spatulas the silicone spatulas because those are a lot softer and this is obviously metal so it doesn't have that flexibility and therefore it's a totally different uh, feeling and I find that if I really wanted to build up thickness of the paint the best probably would be a metal spatula versus a silicone one. So here I'm just playing around with a bit of uh, mixing around as well which works quite well with this um, tool and I love these oil sticks. So the ones that you saw me use so far are the Sennelier oil sticks and I have to say I absolutely adore them. Um, I used to work with someone from uh, Jackson's Art. They, um, it's a, it was a lovely girl. She left now uh, to pursue a job somewhere else. But uh, she originally introduced me to those Sennelier oil sticks because I reached out and I asked whether they were planning at some point to stock the other um, oil sticks. So the one that you just saw me use um, just now, the light green, is the Shiva oil sticks. And they are quite different they are uh, a lot uh, more opaque and they actually dry a little bit faster but that was the only experience i had back then and um, it was very difficult to get hold of them the only place was amazon and uh, it would take a little bit of a while to receive them because i think they were shipped from um, abroad somewhere so anyways that's when she asked me whether I ever tried the Sennelier oil sticks because those they had on their website 
and I gave it a go and I have to say I fell in love and really ever since I have been expanding my color collection and truthfully I have moved from the Shivas to the Sennelier even though they dry a little bit longer um, they're just an absolutely amazing paint the way they um, that they're just super smooth you can get some paints that are more translucent or transparent than others then there are paints that are more opaque and they mix they they blend like a dream and that is as far as i would ever go <laughs> Uh, using oil paints or oil um, yeah oil paints in a stick form it's a lot cleaner and easier it's as clean as it can get oil paints take a few days to um, to dry fully and they're just quite different the texture you can achieve and that lovely silky kind of satiny um, finish that you can't achieve with other paints and the way they also mix is, is just a dream. Here I'm moving on to the FW Dallaroni um, acrylic ink just to audition that as a kind of like a muted dark brown greenish color and I will let you enjoy the rest of the swatching. Okay, so back to this page. Now this is now fully, fully dry and it's been, how many days has it been? Gosh, it's been a good four or five days maybe since I did this page. Um, and yeah, you know, I can confidently say that the oil paint has fully dried even on those very kind of textured and thickly laid areas. Um, so this was the green and the blues that I was considering but uh, what I want to do is create like a watercolor effect and I'm just thinking I'm thinking about a couple of colors here so I want to use a traditional watercolor and then I want to use in case traditional watercolor, watercolor will not work. I am thinking of also trying the um, high flow acrylics which is basically it has that you, you can apply the watercolor technique. Sorry for my brain fog. I just kind of um, came out of a flu which tested a few times negative. Um, it never tested positive but I, I had all the symptoms of, you know, you know what I mean. So anyway, I'm left with this like crazy brain fog. Um, okay, so yeah, high flow acrylics, you can use them as watercolor, but they of course are acrylic paints, so they do dry permanently. You can build them up, you can uh, make them really translucent and just play around with them. So it's a good substitute for watercolor. In case a traditional... Uh, watercolor will not want to stick to this so let's try it out and we we'll see how we get on I'm just going to look for the right color in watercolors okay so let's look at my uh, yellows and my um, oranges which I keep sort of in this one compartment and I think I want to try Gwenacridon Deep Gold and just for fun I want to see Iridescent Aztec Gold. I might want to add some some sort of gold colors into the painting as well but again we'll see how we get on. So let's use the palette and we'll have three options here. I gave my Daniel Smith a nice break so I hope <laughs> They haven't all dried up in the tubes. That would be quite uh, disappointing. But anyway, it's time to get back to using them and using them up. Okay, so here we go. Let's get some water ready as well. Maybe actually mixing a bit of nickel azer yellow into this 
color here, transparent red iron oxide, just a tiny bit, just to lift it. <clears throat> See what happens. Okay, I'm going to try use this up uh, first because if it dries on the palette, it becomes permanent. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just find some areas where I can overlap and see what happens. I have been asked many, many times about sort of wood brush I would recommend using with acrylic paints that wouldn't damage the bristles and I absolutely have haven't had any problems with the Jackson's quill brush and mind you this brush has been my like first discovery of their brushes and I had it almost since the beginning of my channel and this brush had it all <laughs> it tried every paint and it's fine with everything as long as you don't let the paint obviously dry onto it but it's fine okay so far I like what's happening obviously the oil paint is resisting a little bit but I wonder if it's going to dry over the top because that is the effect that I quite like I like the fact that it sort of looks a bit glazed uh, and it has that lovely transparency to it which I want to create if possible in my finished painting and that um, that would be the botanical aspect of it okay let me try one more just here okay maybe just changing it up a bit just longer all right so I'll leave it at that and before things dry I'm just going to very quickly wipe them off the dish and later if they dry I usually use use a nail polish remover okay let's try with watercolor now with watercolor it's going to be a bit more tricky but I still want to see the effect so Let's go with it. Okay, so you can see watercolor doesn't even want to stay on here. It just repels it and pushes it back onto the paper. Let me try again. There we go. All right, so it looks like watercolor will not be the right medium which is something I thought would be the case um, but you know I did have my high flow acrylics in mind if the watercolor wouldn't work so I like that you can sort of maybe layer underneath so I can still work with watercolor and paint over these uh, you know oil paints but basically what would happen is it would look like rather than layering over the top it would look like it's uh, underneath it so that's a thing I can totally do because I do have quite a lot of white area on my painting um, let me just quickly take you back to my to my canvas Okay, so before the lighting goes, I just wanted to show you you can see there's loads of white area and the idea is that around Here I'm planning to add a bit something more and then maybe leaving this area um, white as it is sort of just the paper that way I could layer some of the botanical aspects but this is just you know raw ideas in my mind it may come out completely different uh, but I just thought I'll share with you how 
my um, sort of ideas are evolving as I go in this creative process. So now let's try the gold, see how that works, whether the metallic particles add anything to the um, color, whether they change how it would stick onto paints. So let's try it over here. Huh, well it's sticking a little bit. I can get it. Uh, it doesn't stay where I'm putting it, but at least it doesn't fully go back. So I wonder how it would look once it dries. The gold on the blue probably would pop quite nicely. So let's try it here. Well, it's doing a, a much better job than just the regular watercolor. Not as good as the um, high flow acrylics, but at least I'm getting some sort of definition here. So I think I'll leave it at that. That gives us a good idea. Let me just try it here on the green. Maybe the green was particularly resistant <laughs> or difficult. So I just want to make sure it uh, would behave the same way as it behaved just on the blue just now. Let's see. Oh no, I am getting it to stay a little bit. So it's definitely something to do with the particles in the gold paint. Again, it's not staying as well. As the um, high flow did here. And this color is mixed in together with this color. So both of them are here and the high flow is still layered over it. So that's why I'm making my conclusion that it's not the oil paints, well it is, but you know what I mean. There's something about the metallic paints. Obviously the particles are different. They're artificial compared to a pigment that's supposed to be natural. So here it kind of breaks up the lines, but to be honest with you, it's a very interesting effect. What we're having here is kind of what I'm painting, but also it's sort of going on its own journey. And I'm not just getting what I'm painting, period, but there is something happening to it that I am not controlling. So it's out of my control. And I quite like that sort of like, you know, happy accidents. The lines are a little bit broken up in places. Okay. Well, that gives us a really good idea. I really like this. I think once it dries, the gold will look lovely.